having some chai or coffee. Uh -huh. What would you like to try? I'm 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 telling you now I'm not gonna buy any carpet today because I live so here. What? So okay, I'm just saying like uh, uh but hey. Our okay, thank you. I'll have some coffee then. With or without sugar? Uh, with a little bit. Kilim is a rug which is cleft woven. I okay. see. So this is actually a rug without pile. There are vertical and horizontal strings used. Uh, work okay. and weft. In that way, is a kilim made. Material mm -hmm. is pure wool. Uh huh. And the colors are 100 percent vegetables. So oh, there is I see, I see. zero chemicals in this, none of them. I see. Okay, and, and this is also the same? No, it's not the same. This is a double work of the first one. Uh -huh. First flat woven, on top of the flat weave, this is cross stitching, embroidery. I understand, okay. And this is a rug which is knotted, which has pile. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is proof of being quality piece. Really? Yeah. And this is the holy Turkish coffee. I see, okay. With some sugar. So I, I'm curious, so how many like knots per square? 254 cent? knots in a square inch. So this one too, if you flip it, does it change or not? It does. Yeah. And so what, what is the highest concentration of knots that you guys well, it's crazy. do in Turkish rugs? The highest, what I'm having here is now 24 by 24. 1034 double knots in a square centimeter. Wow. And, and that's 24 inches. Uh, I mean, no, how not in inch. No, yes. I know, but I mean, how big is that rug? It's tiny. I like this one a lot. A little bit bigger than this. I see. And it's you said more than four. So years. how can you tell a fake from a real carpet? That's interesting. I have to see the carpet. Okay. So you have to be able to analyze. You can't just look at it and tell by feel or touch. Naturally, you can. But the reality is, you can to understand the balance between authentic quality and commercial quality. You don't need to be an expert or something either. Mm -hmm. Skeleton, uh -huh. warp, wet. Yeah. Can you flip that again? I want to see this. Yeah. So this is how you tell. And the pile part is coming from middle out. If it's real. The logic. The movie will make any type of tropics over. You oftentimes we will vacuum. And that's silk. Mm -hmm. That's how you can tell when it changes the color. It gets. Mm -hmm. From that reason, Pretty impressive. European Institute has evaluated Turkish rug resistance with three generations of guarantee. Mm -hmm. A generation calculated like 90 years. Very nice. So practically seen our and then on the way back brought it to Turkey and yeah. then okay then it made it from there to Italy. Yeah. Exactly. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Marco Polo introduced silk to Turkey. I was I was uh, had been living in Vietnam for the past year, and we went to silk farms there. But then I was like, well, what's the difference between Italian silk and Vietnamese silk? And then now that I see Turkish silk, I didn't know there's like different qualities, or different textures, or the different. Best, the best mulberry leaves are growing in Turkey. And the only thing what the silkworms are eating, mm -hmm. that's mulberry leaves. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that makes the best quality silk? Mulberry. Yeah. Interesting. So what the worms eat depends on the quality of the silk. Exactly. Okay. News. <laughs> I really like that rug. It's very nice. Why don't I make you a gift discount? I can't buy today, man. Come on, man. I don't have that kind of money. I just have to you pay for it. You use your money. You can use your plan. <laughs> Young kids are not doing these carpets. I see. There is no kid child work in Turkey. No, I'm not. So I'm not no, I'm judging. telling yeah. you. Yeah. So I'm I mean, telling who you. are you guys finding to make? I mean, this is like a laborious thing. I mean, I know in Iran. What the fact is, what the fact is, we are still faithful to the tradition dowry that uh -huh. the Turkish carpets are still existing at mm. all. Because, unfortunately, this is also a tradition which is slowly, slowly getting disappeared because yeah, yeah. usually young people are more involved into commercial works like us not being in a farm not being in a country house side yeah, yeah. so to say they move into cities and work in factories or whatever right because in Iran they have village people they have like these nomadic tribal people you know they've always been doing these rugs over there and mm -hmm. they'll always kind of be there to do that sort of work there like, are uh, there are several rules which are making carpets to be produced. The tradition begins with a lovely kilim, like out of the first one, which yeah, is yeah. the simplest type. Right. If the girl is good at, then she is going to be taught by her elder people, by her aunties, uh -huh. by her mom, by her grandma. They teach her to make a dowry rug. And then if she's good at skill, after being married, she's also making her in future family house 
she starts to make a royal carpet which is in wool still but it's very fine and if she's very good at skill then she can start to make a silk carpet she's going step by step and this is equaling at least to 20 years of experience uh -huh. to weave a silk carpet not everyone can make a silk carpet that is necessary for some talency that is necessary for experience for everything okay it's a masterpiece it's a work of art it's around 240 years old really and who made it a turkish lady yeah 204 years old wow. yes a few years ago uh, some collectors wanted to they came to ask is it sold mm -hmm. and they were shocked as we saw as we said no it's not for sale huh I mean, is this is for sale?